Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be discussing and continuing our investigation into the foundations of genocide. Um, in this particular discussion, what I'm going to look at um, is Raphael Lemkin's uh, analysis of two things. One, the techniques of genocide. He calls them the techniques of genocide, and he gives eight, he lists eight things that are the eight techniques of genocide. I'm going to talk about that. Um, and also what I'm going to talk about um, are his two stages of genocide. Um, there'll be some other things and other ideas and concepts that I incorporate into this discussion. Um, but this will be um, probably the final section of sort of this introductory discourse on uh, genocide studies. Um, if I continue um, the series on uh, genocide, I'll probably go to a more advanced discussion of sort of genocide prevention and sort of the, the semantics and definitional disagreements in the nature of genocide and so on. Um, so this will probably be, probably be the last series of videos pertaining to um, uh, an introduction to genocide studies. Okay, so um, let's begin. This is Foundations of Genocide. Okay, so this is Foundations of Genocide, and um, as I said, I'm going to discuss Lemkin's uh, concept of the two phases of genocide, what they are, how do we come to understand it, and also his, his uh, eight techniques. Okay, so Lemkin has two phases. Lincoln has two phases of genocide. Um, he talks about two phases in, um, in his book. And what I'm going to do now is describe the two phases and, and show you how these two phases apply to this concept of genocide. Remember that his account of, of genocide um, was a number of years ago, like 60 years or so ago. Uh, with respect to Lincoln's account, a lot has been modified. Um, there are a lot of theorists, a lot of genocide scholars who have talked about multiple stages or multiple phases of uh, genocide. Um, the most, uh, the most, um, I guess, the most an individual can do in understanding Lincoln's account of genocide is to understand the sort of his attempt to conceptualize this, this concept, right? It's easy now for us to say, oh, well, yeah, I understand those two phases. Isn't that obvious? Well, the reason why it's obvious is because we've had 60 years worth of research, 60 years worth of literature, 60 years worth of um, genocides to be able to understand this idea of, of genocide and according to Lemkin, his two phases. But think about Lemkin in his time during his era attempting to articulate genocide at that moment. Um, it's a lot more complicated. Uh, it's extremely difficult to be able to conceptualize some of these ideas. Um, especially... Um, given the historical situatedness, and I'll talk about sort of this his historical situation in a second. All right. So the first, the first phase, according to Lemkin, is the destruction of the national pattern of the oppressed group. Right. The first phase is the destruction of the national pattern of the oppressed group. Um, what ends up happening in an act of genocide, um, according to Lemkin, is that we're going to separate it into two phases. In the first phase, what's going to happen is that the oppressor is going to attempt to destroy the national pattern. And we'll see what this national pattern is in a sense, right? The national pattern entails, um, and some of this is jumping ahead, the national pattern entails um, the peoples, the targeted groups, uh, cultural uh, practices, their religious beliefs, their their moral foundation, their economic practices, their um, their um, sort of health, um, their psychological well-being. All of these things um, constitute their 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 social institutions. All of these things collectively constitute their national pattern, right? So, by national pattern, all Lincoln is really saying, in a very general sense, um, is that those things, those criteria, those signifiers which identify the population as such, right? Um, and the attempt is to destroy the identity of the people 
So what oppressors do is they target the national pattern, since the national pattern um, is synonymous, in a sense, with the identity of the people. All right, so that's the first phase. Um, the second phase, what ends up happening, is that the oppressors uh, attempt to impose the imposition, the imposition of the national pattern of the oppressor. Okay, so in the first stage, in the first phase rather, um, there's an attempt by the oppressor to destroy the national pattern of the oppressed group. Then, and I'll draw this out in a second, then the second phase is the imposition of the national pattern of the oppressor. So you can imagine, for example, and this is just uh, a general example, remember if we're talking about the destruction of a group, just for, I mean genocide usually happens within the confines of a state's border, but just to make this clear, imagine that I have group X and your national pattern is represented by X, right? National pattern for targeted targeted group. Okay, and let's just say that Y is the national pattern for the oppressor. So X equals the national pattern for the targeted group, the people that we are attempting to kill to destroy. Y equals the national pattern for the oppressor. The first phase is the destruction of the national pattern of the oppressed group. So what ends up happening is that this national pattern is destroyed. Right? So that's stage one. So the first phase results in the destruction of the national pattern of the oppressed group. And then stage two is the attempt to convey or transfer the national pattern of the oppressor to replace the oppressed group with it, right? So that there's a replacement, there's a substitution between the national pattern, the previous national pattern, which was X, of the oppressed group with the new national pattern of the oppressor, right? So according to Lumpkin, these are the two phases of genocide. The first phase is the destruction of the national pattern of the targeted group, the oppressed group. Once that national pattern has been destroyed, the next phase is to impose the national pattern of the oppressor and to substitute that national pattern. And we'll understand more what that means and exactly how that's done when we talk about the eight techniques to genocide that he discusses. Um, but to after the destruction of the national pattern of the oppressed group, to replace that national pattern with the national pattern of the oppressor. Okay, It's relatively, uh, and there's more to it, but as, as an introduction, I think that's, that's clear enough.